Hi, I'm Simone Jane with the IBM MQ Developer Experience Team, and today I'm thrilled to bring you an overview of native HA cross region replication and how it helps to keep your valuable data safe. If you haven't already, have a look at this video where we cover native HA because this video will be building on the concepts from there. And now I'd like to hand over to my guest who will tell you more about this feature. Thanks, Simone. Uh, so hi, I'm Jean de Garrigue, and I'm a developer working on native HA cross-region replication for MQ. Great to have you here, Jean. So let's get into it. What exactly is native HA cross-region replication? So for one, uh, it provides a disaster recovery solution for MQ. Um, so let's say you have a native HA queue manager. If one instance uh, out of the three goes down, a replica can take over and no data is lost. But what if something occurs that causes the entire cluster where the queue manager is hosted to go down? You lose all your data. Precisely. And when you have no queue manager, your client transactions are blocked. And even worse, if your disks get corrupted, you'll lose all transactions on your queues. Mm -hmm. So this must be particularly harmful for businesses that handle large volumes of transactions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, even if the outage lasts only an hour, it could be extremely costly for certain businesses. Uh, but that's where cross-region replication comes in. Your native HAQ manager, which we call the live group, is replicated in a separate location far enough away that an outage can't affect both instances at once. Um, this replicated group is called the recovery group, and it's updated uh, asynchronously by the live group. That way, if the live group does go down, um, your recovery group can pick up the work and that minimizes any data loss. That sounds really useful, but surely disasters are fairly infrequent. Wouldn't it be more likely for a site to go down for a scheduled maintenance? Yeah, and that's actually the most common use case for this feature. Um, because we know the maintenance will occur, we can switch over to our recovery group through what's called a planned failover. Um, so that means that the live group and recovery group become pending recovery and pending live respectively. And the recovery group only takes over when its log data is identical to the live group, meaning there's no data loss in this process. That makes sense. Well, it's been great hearing about how native HA cross-region replication works, but do you think you can show us a demo so we can see it in action? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Hello again, and welcome to the demo section of this video. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a queue manager with cross-region replication and how to perform planned and unplanned failovers. So let's get right to it. Here in front of me, is a native HA queue manager that I created using the MQ operator on an OpenShift cluster. I've named it NHACRR alpha, and if I click through to its stateful set and view the pods created, we can see here the three instances of the queue manager, with this pod here as the active instance. Now, let's say I want to add cross-region replication to my queue manager. To do that, I need to create my recovery group. So let's navigate to a new project on the cluster where I want my recovery group to be. In this project, I'll select the MQ operator, then click on the Queue Manager tab and click on Create Queue Manager. Here, I can set up my recovery group by filling in this form or by pasting in some YAML. If you've already created a native HA Queue Manager, it's convenient to be able to paste in YAML and alter only the necessary fields. For now though, let's use the form view. I'll call this group NHACRR Beta. Now, the labels for the queue manager can be quite useful to help remember what group we're looking at. So here, I'll add a label which indicates that this is the recovery group. I'll then accept the MQ license. Then expand out the queue manager section. I'll set the availability type to native HA. And I'll name it beta and set its role to recovery. As OpenShift requires secure communication between clusters, I've created some OpenShift secrets containing TLS certificates, so I'll select the key here. Under the remote section, I'll add the address of the route used to access the live queue manager and set up the trust store. Once I'm done configuring the recovery group, I can click Create. All right, now that the recovery group is up and running, I need to edit my live group to add connection details to the recovery group. 
you can do this in form view, but I'll make the changes on YAML view instead. I'll ensure my role field is set to live and I'll add a remote section with the required certificates and address, which points to the route to connect to the beta queue manager. I'll also create a label to help me remember that this is my live group. Once that's done, I can save my changes and the live group will automatically perform a rolling update on each instance to apply those changes. Now that I have a fully functional native HAQ manager with cross-region replication, I want to make sure applications can connect to it. So here in front of me is MQ Explorer, which I've successfully connected to my queue manager. I can view the details of both groups and the roles and status of each QM instance. I'll now create a queue and put some messages on it so we can see what happens to them when we fail over. So now, let's say we know there will be a maintenance at the data center where our live group is hosted. Since we don't want any downtime or data loss, let's carry out a plan failover to our recovery group. In my live group queue manager, I'll change its role to recovery. And if I then go into my queue manager and issue a DSPMQ command to view its status, I can see here that it is in pending recovery. And likewise on the recovery side, I then change the role to live. And we can observe a status of live. During this time, the connection to MQ Explorer was broken, but upon reconnecting, it simply connects to the new live group. And if we look at the queue we just created, we can see that no messages were lost. Now, that's all well and good, but let's say a disaster has struck our live group. To simulate this, I will delete my live queue manager. In this case, I must go to the recovery group and change its role to live as before, but I must also set remote enable to false to notify that the live group is down. Like before, the recovery group successfully becomes live and picks up the work. If I issue a DSPMQ command on my now live group, which is back to alpha, I can observe the recov time, which indicates the time of the last log held by this group. This can help us figure out how much data was lost due to the outage. When the previously live group returns, so that's beta, it will still think that it is the live group, and comparing log data between the two can help decide which group should remain live, and the other will go through a group rebase to get back on track with the live. In this video, we were joined by Jean, who gave us an overview on native HA cross-region replication and how failover is carried out. Thanks again, Jean. Thanks for having me. And thank you all for watching.